Hey guys, so today I wanted to go over the hand drill friction fire. And the hand drill friction fire is probably one of the more important ways to learn how to make friction fires because it is very quick to set up and that it has very few parts. And once you get all the technique down, it actually produces a coal in very little time with very little effort. So in this video, I'm gonna quickly go over the materials for the fireboard, the spindle, choosing the spindle size, and I'm gonna concentrate a lot on hand technique and body position because if done wrong, this technique is very labor intensive, but if done right, you can put very little effort into it and then have a coal within no time. So let's get started. This fireboard is made out of Western red cedar and it was split and batoned into a thinner piece of wood. This one is about a half inch thick, which is on the upper side of how thick you want it to be. If you have a board that's too thick, you're really gonna have to get a lot of powder in your notch in order to start to get a cherry. So um, the thinner, the better, but if you have it too thin, you're gonna burn through your board within no time. So about half inch to probably one third of an inch is probably the sweet spot of where you want a, uh, a board to be. Good woods to use are sotal, yucca, balsam fir, western red cedar like I have here, cypress, tamarack, basswood, cottonwood, American elm, slippery elm, and willow. When you're choosing a spindle, it's a good idea to have it a pinky width or smaller. The smaller you have the spindle, the more RPMs per stroke you're gonna have, which means a lot less work for you. Uh, but the bigger spindles are easier on your hands, so there's less bruising, less blistering, but it's gonna move a lot slower. The spindle can be made out of the same sort of wood, but any sort of soft wood with a pithy center will do. With a pithy spindle, you can actually carve out the center pith, and it kind of makes like a, a dimple inside of the wood. And what this does is it keeps the center from pushing the outer edge out and creating less pressure on the outside because it's the outer edge that actually does most of the work. This spindle is made out of horseweed and horseweed is native to North America and is pretty widespread throughout the continent. And it's found in uh, open fields, next to railroads, construction sites, things like that. So now it's time to prepare our fireboard. So the first thing we wanna do is make a divot for our spindle to start burning a pilot hole. And to do that, you can take your knife or other uh, implements such as a sharp rock, a uh, piece of glass, anything that you have on hand. And uh, you can use the tip of a knife and either press it in and kind of rotate it like this. Or if your knife has sort of a, a pry bar at the end of the knife like mine, and you wanna make sure that the hole is approximately the same size or a little bit bigger than your spindle. So before we get into sort of the hand technique and body position aspect of the hand drill friction fire, we have to talk about traction. And without proper traction in your hands, it's gonna be really easy for you to slip from the top of the spindle all the way down without actually putting that much pressure into the tip, into the fireboard. So with proper traction, it's gonna make it so that you can apply as much downward pressure as you can, and also as much spinning action as you can into the spindle. In order to get traction, a lot of people teach that you should spin on your hands. And while this is a really effective way, it is short-lived. So, you know, as you're going, your, your saliva or water, whatever you're using on your hands, is gonna to start to evaporate, and you're gonna to have to reapply and keep on going. Uh, another method which I learned, which is very effective, is to simply use pine pitch. And so I carry a little film canister of pine pitch uh, whenever I plan on doing this sort of thing. And when it's in its crystalline form, when all the turpentine is evaporated out of it, it turns into kind of like a hard, crusty uh, mass. And it's really easily crushed. And once that powder is formed, it's really easy to apply it onto the shaft of your spindle. Once you get a little tiny crystal in your hand, just put it in your palm and take the non-working end of your spindle and simply press down onto your pitch. And it'll start to break up into a fine powder. And you can kind of twist it to kind of grind at it like a grindstone. And then you simply work 
the powder onto your shaft. And you don't have to coat the entire shaft of your spindle. You only got to do probably two thirds of it because once you get down to the bottom end of your spindle, you're going to be working a lot less efficiently. And so at that point, it's time to reset. So we're just going to go over about two thirds of the spindle and any little bit that you have extra, you can just simply rub into your hands. So let's get on to hand technique. Before we go into putting the spindle onto the fireboard, it's a good idea to just figure out how it's supposed to feel and how it's supposed to look. So it's very common for people, and I've seen even instructors do it, do what I call short stroking. And that's essentially just using the palm of their hand to do all the work. What's bad about that is it's a lot less efficient than doing it the proper way, which is to use the entire hand. So what you do to get the right feel for it, put the spindle between two of your hands in the middle of your hands and slowly move the spindle to the heels and to the tips of your fingers. And what this does is it actually puts about twice the amount of rotations per stroke and it also evens out the burden put onto your hands. So if you're just using the palms of your hands, you're putting a lot of work into just a little area and you can get bruising and blistering a lot faster. But if you spread out the workload onto your entire hand, there's a lot less chance of that stuff happening. So I tell people to have a nice firm karate chop grip because that's gonna tell your brain that you should be using the entire length and it also keeps your hands from bowing out, which is very common when you're using uh, just the palm of your hands. And when you bow at your fingers like that, you'll notice that the skin on your palm gets a lot tighter. And when it's tight, it kind of gets rid of all that natural padding that you have in your hands. And that is what's gonna lead to bruising and blistering and that sort of thing. So just remember, karate chop and nice long strokes and you'll be a happy camper. So now it's time to get into some body position. And it's really quite simple. The first thing you need to do is put your foot onto your fireboard to plant it firmly into the ground because you don't want it slipping around. And the next part of this is to place your back knee so that your thigh is perpendicular to the ground. And what this allows you to do is once you have your spindle going, it's going to make it easier for you to bend at the waist as you move down. If you don't bend at the waist and you're moving down your spindle, your arms end up pointing downward at an angle not parallel to the ground and you're going to be using your shoulders in order to put downward force into your spindle. So by bending at the hips, I'm going to make it easy for myself to crouch down and really apply all that pressure into the, uh, the spindle. Now if I have my knee too close, I'm pretty much bending into a C and there's going to be a lot of curvature in my back which is not even good to begin with. So it's also going to limit your breathing as you're going through this. So with my knee planted well behind me so that I have a nice perpendicular stance and my foot firmly planted onto the board, now I can begin at burning my pilot hole. So I want both hands in line with my torso so that I'm not going outward like that. I want my elbows and my hands to be relatively in line with each other. So bending at the hips. and there I have my pilot hole burnt. So now we'll go on to cutting our notch in. So the first thing we gotta do when making a notch is figure out where the center is gonna be. And the easiest way I found to do that is to take your knife and take the edge and simply bisect the circle as evenly as you can. And then from there, roll onto the edge. And with sort of a rocking action, make as deep as a cut as you can. It's going to be a lot easier for you to cut on the edges 
than on a flat surface. So going back and forth, you start taking away some material. And you'll do this on the top and the bottom. Top. Now work on the bottom. And you'll see that working both top and the bottom creates a secondary edge, which then you'll work the middle. You want it to be as clean as possible with as few burrs on the inside because you want the powder to fall freely once it starts to be produced. If it gets hung up, then you're going to have some issues with powder collection and that sort of thing. Also, you want the notch to be either straight up and down or a slight overhang, so a little bit deeper on the bottom. That'll also help make sure that the powder can free fall. And the angle for the notch is pretty similar to your standard peace sign. So now we're ready to get on to business. The only thing I've done is I put a small fire pan underneath our fireboard. And you want to make sure whatever you're using is a dry material. You can even use, you know, um, a shaving of wood to put underneath it. But make sure that it's dry because any moisture that you have is going to be detrimental to the coal that you're trying to create. So we're going to go ahead and with the technique that we just learned, we're going to start our cherry. And so with their nice long strokes, we're going to start spinning and working down the spindle. And we want to go at a slow to medium pace, putting about 25 to 30 pounds of pressure downward. Remember to be bending at the hips to relieve stress from our shoulders. And while we're doing this, we're warming up the board, which drives excess moisture from the wood that might be in there from the atmosphere. And we're also creating some dust in the notch. And the dust is key to making this work because it serves as the fuel, which will ignite from the heat. And without the fuel, there's gonna be no coal. So once you start to see smoke, pick up your speed, increase pressure. And once you see that it's smoking by itself, you know that you have a coal. So you can take a small stick and put it in the notch just to make sure that none of the dust gets carried away with the board. So now you can transfer this to your tinder bundle and blow it to life. So the last thing I want to show you guys is called the floating hand technique. And this is a really cool technique for advanced users because it eliminates the need to have to go from the bottom of the spindle all the way to the top of the spindle and then work your way back down again. And so there's pretty much just two parts to this and they're really quite easy to remember. It's A and V. And I'll show you what that looks like right here. So basically, starting from the bottom of the spindle, you wanna turn your hands into a V shape. Then you wanna stroke, and then it turns into an A. Then you turn that A upside down, or that frown upside down, and then it turns into a V again. Flip it, and then you're all the way to the top of the spindle. So in fast motion from the bottom to the top, what it looks like is this. Now these hand movements are quite exaggerated and I'll show it to you what it looks like in real time. So it might not look like it, but I'm putting down quite a bit of force and you can see the result as a smoke. So this is a really cool way to heat up your fireboard because it's basically like cruising versus stop and go traffic. So you're always applying heat and you're always applying pressure. And when you're ready to go, you revert back to the Yol technique because you can go faster and stronger. until you have your coal. 
And that's pretty much how the floating technique is done. So that's how you make a fire using the hand drill method. In the beginning stages, just take it easy. You don't want to be overly bruising your hands. You don't want to be getting a bunch of blisters and you don't want to be getting a lot of calluses. Um, over time, your muscles are going to develop, your skin's going to get thicker, and you know your technique is going to be really dialed down. So you'll be really able to do this with no problem at all. But as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and take care out there.